Hey, what is going on guys? Watson KHD here, back again with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the location of another 12 unique weapons, hats, and other items in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, before we get into this video, if you haven't seen my previous video, I urge you to go and check it out. It shows you the location of 20 different weapons, masks, hats, and other items in Red Dead Redemption 2, and you should definitely go ahead and pick them up. I will leave a link in the description, as well as a card in the top right-hand corner, so you can watch it either before this video or after this video. It's completely up to you, but I urge you to go and check it out. Now, speaking of last video, Guys, what happened? It absolutely blew up. As of recording this video, we have over 100,000 views, almost 5,000 likes, and we've absolutely smashed 3,000 subscribers. What the hell is going on? The, the amount of support I've got from you guys is crazy, and I can't thank you enough. Now, here's a couple things before we start. The very first weapon that we are going to pick up is going to be the stone hatchet. Now, you can only get this weapon if you have completed the challenge in GTA Online. And the challenge for this was you had to kill five of these guys and then you'd be able to pick up the hatchet and you'd have to get 25 kills with the hatchet in order for it to spawn in Red Dead Redemption 2. And secondly, we are going to be picking up two items that we kind of previously picked up but we haven't, if that makes sense. Last video, we picked up the rusted double bit hatchet, and in this video, we're going to be picking up the normal double bit hatchet. In the last video, we also picked up the normal hunter hatchet, and in this video, we're going to be picking up the rusted hunter hatchet. Both the same weapon, however, completely different. But anyway, guys, I don't wanna to waste too much of your time, so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So for our first weapon, you want to head northwest of Strawberry, just above the Oangela Lake, and you will come to the native burial site. Now this can be inspected and it will add a location to your map. Anyway, once you get here, you're going to see these stones in a formation on the ground. And in the middle of these stones, you will be able to find the stone hatchet. Again, guys, you had to complete the challenge on GTA Online in order for this to spawn. The description for this reads, an old and rare hatchet made from a large stone blade, leather straps, and feathers. This melee weapon was found at a native burial site in Big Valley, West Elizabeth, and was likely used as part of the burial ceremony. This hatchet can also be thrown. Now heading just north of that location, we are going to find a mine and inside this mine we are actually going to pick up two different items. So here we go, here's the entrance, you want to head inside and you're actually going to find a plunger and you're going to pull this plunger and it's going to activate the dynamite at the end of the tunnel, blowing it up and clearing a way for you to walk through. You might want to pull out a lantern here as well because it is pretty dark. But just follow where I go and you will find the items we are looking for. So anyway guys, once you get to the end of the mine, we are going to pick up a wide blade knife out of a corpse. Now the description for this reads, a rare hunting knife with a wide clip point blade and worn curved wooden handle. This knife was found sticking out of the back of a corpse in the mines of Beryl's Dream, Big Valley. The previous owner of this weapon went to great lengths to prevent their crime from being discovered. Now also just in front of where we found this knife in the body, you'll be able to find the miner's hat which acts as a headlamp and it is absolutely amazing for when you're searching around in the dark. You can put the hat on your head, go into first person and it will shine a light directly in front of you. Thank you. 
Next up, you want to head directly north from that location until you come to this area near Hanin Dog Ranch Gang Hideout. Once you get here, you're going to find what looks to be a hunter and a bear. They've had a fight. Clearly, no one has won this fight, but inside of the bear's neck, you are going to find the antler knife. And the description for this reads, a rare knife with a handle manufactured from the antler of a stag, and part of the blade snapped off near the crossguard. This weapon was taken from the scene of a fight between a large bear and a hunter, which occurred near Hanning Dog Ranch in Big Valley, neither side won. Next up, you want to head east of Hanging Dog Ranch until you come to a location that is right near Wallace Station. Once you get here, you're going to find what looks to be a chimney stack as a house probably used to be here. And in the tree stump directly in front of you, you are going to find the double bit hatchet. This is not the rusted double bit hatchet, this is a normal version. The description reads, a rare hatchet featuring a double bladed head, one razor sharp side for chopping and cutting, and a dull side for splitting wood. This metal weapon was found in the tree stump near Wallace Station in Big Valley, and appears to be fairly new. This hatchet can also be thrown. From that location, you want to head north until you reach the top of Mount Hagen here on the map. Now, what we're actually looking for is in the M on Mount Hagen. So just put your marker there. And once you've reached the end of the road, you're going to be on this snow at the top of the mountain. Simply follow the path that I take. And down here on the right, you should see a frozen body. Now, if you go up to it, you can inspect it and it will be named the Frozen Settler in your journal and an icon will also appear on the map. Now after you've finished jotting it down in your journal, simply walk up and you can swap your hat for the Marion helmet. Next up, you want to head slightly northwest of that location until you reach Lake Isabella. Now, once you get to this location here, you'll see the lake in front of you. And if you turn around, you're going to see this cave. Now, inside this cave, there appears to be a dead body, probably frozen because it was so cold. And if you look in the cart, you're going to find a chest. Now, inside this chest, you will find a billfold and you will also find cobalt petrified wood, which can be used to craft items at a fence. The description reads, a greenish and blue colored piece of petrified wood used to craft a unique item at the fence. Next up, you want to head east of Valentine, slightly northwest of Emerald Station until you come to Heartland Overflow. Now, what we are looking for usually spawns here, however, I have been chasing it a little bit. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about the Merino Black Sheep. Only one of these sheep spawn in the game, and it's easily recognizable not just because of its black fur, but because it also sports a pink bow. Now, in my opinion, there isn't really any point in killing this animal as you can't skin it. The only thing that you will receive from this animal once you've killed it and picked it up is a gold wedding ring. Now, I have made a save as I don't plan on keeping this animal dead. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to kill it right now. But just know in future videos, you may see this pop up again as I haven't actually killed it. Next up, you want to head directly north from that location and you are going to come up to Moonstone Pond. Now, once you get here, 
you're going to see a nice little pond right here you can see a what looks to be an abandoned crushed house by a tree but right in front of you on this tree stump you are going to be able to pick up the hewing hatchet now the description for this reads this old and worn hatchet has a flat edge along one side of the blade and is designed for hewing, the process of converting logs into lumber. This melee weapon was found in a tree stump near Moonstone Pond in the Grizzlies, next to an abandoned shack. This hatchet can also be thrown. Now for our next location you want to head just east of Moonstone Pond past Three Sisters and you're going to come to this abandoned shack. Once you get here you're going to find a tree stump and inside this tree stump is going to be the rusted hunter hatchet. Much like the hunter hatchet we picked up previously except a rusted version. The description for this reads a rare hatchet with a long bearded axe bit that allows for greater control when planing or shaving wood. The metal weapon was found in a tree stump near three sisters in the grizzlies and has been worn by the elements over time. This hatchet can also be thrown. Next up you want to head slightly east of that location until you get to the old tomb just below Roanoke Valley. Now if you've seen my previous video this may look familiar to you as we actually picked up a viking hatchet and a viking helmet here. However there was an item that we missed. So if we come down here that's where we picked up the hatchet and if we go inside let me just pull out a lantern because it is pretty dark here. But if we now look on the shelf that is where we picked up our helmet now just a few steps down from here you will find a shelf that has four skulls on and if you shoot two of these skulls off you can actually find a viking comb now as far as i know you can't actually do anything with this comb apart from sell it however i would recommend keeping a hold of it just in case something does come up Next up you want to head south of where we were past Emerald Station and slightly west of St Denis and you're going to come to the town of Rhodes. Now if you come to this location in Rhodes you will find an abandoned empty house. Now coming up to the side of the house you can find a door that you can enter and upon entering the house and going to the back of the room you will find an abalone shell fragment. This again is another item which can be used to craft unique items at the fence. Now there is actually a fence in the town of Rhodes just a very short distance away from where we picked up the shell fragment and at this location you can now craft items using the petrified cobalt wood and the abalone shell fragment that we picked up. And once again, last but hopefully not least, you want to head west of Rhodes and you're going to find this island right here. Now if you come to this location on the island, much like the pirate sword, you are going to find a broken boat. Now what you want to do is enter this boat and you're going to head to the very back, climbing over a little bit of wood that's in the way. And as you can see on the floor right there, you can find the tricorn hat. Anyway guys, with that being the final item, that brings us to the end of the video. Now hopefully, that's not all we're going to see of, you know, unique weapons and everything like that. I'm sure there is a bunch more for us to collect. But whether I will be uploading 
big videos like this with like over 10 different items I'm not too sure it may only be a couple of items in each video now so it might be only maybe two maybe three or four maybe even only one depending on how many left there are so hopefully guys you can understand that and hopefully you guys will just enjoy those videos either way and speaking about enjoying videos if you've enjoyed this video and if this guide has helped you at all then a like down below would be greatly appreciated and if you could share this video around that again would mean the absolute world to me now guys if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed and make sure you turn notifications on so you can stay up to date with absolutely everything i upload but anyway guys i hope you have a great day and i'll see you all in the next video